Hello and welcome to the 3D Blu-ray Bunker. This is a place for us die-hard fans of 3D where I look exclusively at 3D Blu-rays, not to do a movie review, but to focus almost entirely on the film's 3D, with just a short word at the end about the film itself. And this time I'm looking at Alfonso Cuaron's 2013 film Gravity. Uh, this has an aspect ratio of 2.39 to 1, and whilst the uh, actual filming of actors was done with 2D cameras, it's for the most part a native 3D film, as the vast majority of what's on screen is 3D rendered CG. I'm going to uh, put up some images from the film here and due to the nature of the way the story unfolds uh, these will definitely represent spoilers so if you haven't seen the film then I advise you to stop watching this now. Same goes for if you don't enjoy listening to some English nerd drone on about geeky 3D uh, so consider yourself warned on both counts there. Gravity is one of the big hitters when it comes to highly regarded 3D movies. Uh, this is the film that anti 3D critics said they'd make the exception for and credit it with being one of the few films, maybe the only one, that they would actively recommend seeing in 3D over 2D. And it's a film that you'll find lurking around the top of lists of great 3D movies, and following on from Ang Lee with the previous year's Life of Pi, it's one of, I think, only two 3D films to have won the Oscar for director. Uh, Titanic doesn't count there, as it wasn't in 3D when James Cameron won his Oscar. This is amongst my favourite 3D films, and like uh, many people who made the comparison on its release, I think this film has better quality 3D. 3D than Avatar. I do need to put a slight caveat on that though, uh, so when I say it's one of my favourite 3D films, I mean that of all the films that happen to have been released in 3D, this is one of my favourites, uh, which is an important clarification to make. And when I said that I think it has better 3D than Avatar, I'm talking about the post-converted 2010 film Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, I know they dropped the prefix from that movie's title, but uh, my hilarious joke there doesn't work unless I reinstate it. Up against James Cameron's Avatar, I find it surprising that anyone would think Gravity's 3D is superior to the many deep, detailed, and rich three-dimensionally textured views in that film, but I think it serves as an example of what makes for good 3D for some people isn't the same as it is for others, because the overall effect that the 3D is having here is to give a feeling of the enormity of space, uh, which of course it would be completely fair to argue is precisely the point of the film using 3D in the first place, and it's not supposed to be a 3D demo disc, and so I'm happy to accept the notion that it therefore uses 3D very well. So the opening view gives you an idea of the type of 3D that the film is predominantly using. There's the disc of the Earth as a backdrop, uh, some way behind the screen, uh, and then the shuttle comes into view, sitting just the tiniest bit in front of the planet. Uh, it's all very realistic 3D, and then Clooney's astronaut comes towards us, eventually moving into his own distinct 3D space, and then briefly emerging out of the screen. So what you've got here is one element, the astronaut, sitting in front of an almost flat backdrop. Uh, just by way of quick comparison, the opening shot of the not quite so highbrow film Triple X The Return of Xander Cage has a not dissimilar opening shot in space, uh, but where the Earth is seen as clearly spherical and there's a load of space and separation in between a lot of the other stuff on the screen uh, with something else emerging out in front of it. It's not remotely realistic 3D, but it's strong 3D and admittedly due to my own personal personal preferences, that's the kind of 3D that I generally enjoy the most. And I don't just mean unrealistic 3D like a spherical Earth, but I tend to think that really good 3D gives solidity and volume to lots of things on the screen, and it creates space and depth in between those elements, uh, what people refer to as layering, uh, and Gravity's 3D doesn't really do a great deal of that. That's not to say it never does, uh, just not that often or with much strength in its 3D. There are lovely examples of it though, um, like this one as we move back from the ship, she floats towards us and that line of tethers emerges from behind. This is great. When the debris field approaches, there's a very mild amount of 3D separation between it and the star field beyond, uh, but perhaps that subtle difference in their spatial positions is what makes the shot work. At other times, there is plenty of separation in the debris fields, but due to the intense action here, these are the only moments in the film where the camera, or virtual camera, uh, really swirls around uh, quite quickly, so there's not that much time to appreciate the 3D. Other times, there isn't much separation in between the debris. In fact, some of these shots could be seen as the very definition of gimmicky 3D, uh, in that there are some extremely brief moments of pop-out as chunks of debris fly out of the screen. Uh, and by the way, I'm not knocking this, they're great and they might make you flinch, but it's funny how when other films do this sort of thing, uh, 3D critics hate it. 
There are a small handful of other things that pop out of the screen, like this floating screw makes a bolt for it, a good way out into negative parallax, and when Clooney grabs it, we get a face full of his space fist. And this works really well here, I think, because as his hand comes all the way out, the sun hits it for extra effect. It's another great shot. Unsurprisingly, there are several other things floating around, like this chess piece, and no coincidence there that it's a castle. Uh, some other stuff floats around, although maybe without a massive amount of separation amongst it, uh, but this little toy comes a good way out towards us, and things float slowly, not just because of uh, the space setting, but because of the beautiful way that the film is shot and assembled. This is the antithesis of the fast-cutting filmmaking mentality. There's another wayward screw making its way out of the screen towards us, um, so a quick note to NASA, perhaps. Perhaps, um, maybe use a bit of thread lock. One of the other things that we see floating around a lot is obviously the film's stars, and whilst there's not a lot to put into 3D here, that feeling of space with the uh, background pushed far behind the window of the screen, or both astronaut and background deep into the screen, it just works surprisingly well. I've heard people say that this is a great 3D shot, but other than everything being in positive parallax, there's only the tiniest amount of stereoscopic separation within the shot. The astronaut's helmet's visors often form a solid 3D dimensional bulge out of the screen, and even these were apparently digital. I'm not sure that the reflections in the visors are in completely the right space, uh, and there's one moment, not this one, where the reflection is particularly noticeable because it's an obvious joke, which is kind of fun if maybe a bit silly. I mentioned the disk of the Earth at the beginning, and obviously up in space you'd see the Earth as a flat disk, but I think there might actually be a very subtle amount of depth in the planet sometimes, with the further parts on the left here being pushed a little bit deeper into the screen. Uh, same sort of thing with the atmosphere above the planet, which also looks like it's just that slightest bit in different 3D space to the planet. Most subtle of all, I think, is some of the views of the star fields, and uh, since human 3D vision drops off after not very many tens of metres, those views of the Earth wouldn't naturally be seen in any 3D, and so, even more so, star fields are going to be a flat backdrop, which most of the time, that's understandably how they appear, like the planet pushed deep into the screen, but, uh, and I'm sure I'm not imagining it, there were times when it looked like they had put just a tiny amount of depth within the star field backdrop. It's ultra subtle, uh, but it does add something to the shot. It's in shots like this, though, where I'd love to see much more of a 3D effect. As it is, though, these views might not quite be totally flat, but there's not very much in the way of volume visible in these structures. And same goes for this tangle of lines. It's really lacking in much of the way of stereoscopic depth, and definitely not something that I'd class as being great 3D. In fact, I'm not sure there's really a single shot in the film that I'd nominate as an all-time 3D classic. There's a moment where the 3D emphasises a quite painful-looking injury to one spaceman, and it's probably a good thing that they don't do anything too overt with the effect here, uh, like placing something obvious like a gurning George Clooney in the space beyond the hole in his head, uh, which I suspect is the kind of thing that a more fun 3D film would do, uh, like if this had been a horror film you'd see the maniacal axeman in the background through the hole. You've probably seen loads of 3D films where there's a great view looking down on someone climbing a ladder, um, but there's not too much depth in the structure in this similar sort of view here. As ever though, what the 3D does by placing the Earth far back into the screen is to create that massive sense of space. Uh, so for me, it's shots like this that encapsulate what the 3D is mostly being used to do in this film. Like in uh, Tron Legacy, there are several times where the strongest 3D effect in a view is what's created by placing lens flare and muck on the lens into the foreground. Sometimes its effect is reasonable enough, but at a most significant moment there are water drops on the lens, which become quite distracting the way they've been placed into 3D space in the foreground. And again, with the film being keen to use visual metaphors, I don't suppose the circular lens flare around Clooney creating a halo effect here is an accident. And speaking of the film's visual metaphors, its most famous shot is probably this one. Uh, ignoring whether or not it's a bit heavy-handed, from a 3D point of view, the stuff around the edge of the frame creates a depth to the wall of the cabin's womb, so it's nice to see some effective 3D in the film's most significant moment. These things burning up look fine in 2D, and that's really how they look in the 3D version too, with no significant stereoscopic depth to them here, and you'd be hard pushed to tell which trail sits where from any stereoscopic information. Same goes for the view looking down on these trails. Uh, there's only the very slightest separation between the trails and the planet, so it's close to being a flat shot. 
As before, I know this isn't a 3D demo disc, but I can't help feeling that if only the camera angle here was a bit shallower and the 3D was dialed up several notches, then it could be a fantastic 3D shot, much like was done with the similar trails of projectiles in the post-converted film The Great Wall, uh, but it remains almost two-dimensional here. I think it's some of the uh, spaceship interiors where the 3D feels at its strongest, uh, particularly when the camera moves through their passageways. It's the classic 3D corridor shot. Prime Focus, who did the conversion work, create what I think are some structurally solid 3D views in the film. Uh, assuming that this thing's a prop and not CG, there's some depth in the view of what she's operating here. So this looks quite solid, and it has more volume than most of those exterior views. They create quite a convincing feeling of the cramped confines of the cabin, and I think there's an example here of where 3D feels like it's heightening your other senses. So to me, uh, the coldness of the cabin is emphasised by the 3D. So whilst I think some of uh, what I assume are converted shots look quite good, at other times they're not so successful. It could be partly to do with the makeup and lighting, but I think the conversion has maybe over-sculpted Sandra Bullock's face sometimes into what often looks not quite right. And these definitely aren't the best 3D faces that you've seen. Another one of the film's significant and celebrated moments is uh, when she starts to cry, and one of the teardrops floats away from her towards us and into its own 3D space. It's pretty good, although it does feature a shallow depth of field in the focus, uh, which is kind of 2D photography's trick of creating a non-stereoscopic 3D effect, uh, but it's still a nice shot. I'm fairly convinced that it's the film's unusual setting that made everyone notice the 3D so much, and if this story had been set um, not around a spaceship, but on a regular ocean ship, and it had employed exactly the same style and strength of 3D, so say it placed a cloudy sky and the horizon deep into the screen all of the time, but everything on board the ship was in quite mild 3D, then I'm pretty sure that the only thing most non-active 3D fans would have said about its 3D was that it was irrelevant, unnecessary, necessary and it added nothing to the film, all the usual complaints. Uh, but here up above the planet it very much gets itself noticed, and I think it's a bit of a case of 3D finding a subject matter that made it appeal to the masses, rather than anything revolutionary or exciting being done with the 3D. So just a very quick word about the film itself. The uh, title has an obvious double meaning, uh, which is relevant as it's about much more than a superficial summary of its story could suggest. It's an absolutely stunning piece of work that's both an exhilarating story of a survival attempt after a disaster in space, but it's also about the weight of grief and how that emotion has its own gravitational force, and about Sandra Bullock's character's need to break its pull in order to live. As a piece of filmmaking, it's a staggering achievement. Uh, it's got that opening shot that's more than 10 minutes long, but it very wisely resists the temptation to play out the entire film in one take. The film's creation of what feels like a realistic portrayal of space is absolutely superb, even if some of the details here may take a few liberties with reality, um, but not in any way that I think is relevant. It's got a stripped-down cast, uh, excuse the pun, uh, with great performances from the two lead actors, and it's a vastly more emotional and overwhelming story than its basic premise might lead you to expect. And I also like the fact that, as well as gravity, the film embraces brevity, with the story clocking in at only about an hour and 25 minutes. So I think that even though it's technically often very mild 3D, it adds a layer of atmosphere to the film, both literally and figuratively, that in the end does make an important difference. And whilst I don't think the 3D is especially good by a standard measure of it, at the same time I do think that it works very well, and ultimately regard gravity as an essential addition to any 3D Blu-ray collection. So I hope you found this in some way useful, and if so, I hope you'll join me again soon for another 3D Blu-ray review. Until then, thanks for looking in on this one, cheers for now, bye bye!